Hey there, quirky people. Today we're gonna look at the movies and TV shows that will be coming out in August 2021. July has been pretty good so far. We've got Black Widow making rounds in theaters and on Disney+. Plus. After that, films like Space Jam 2, Snake Eyes, and Jungle Cruise will also be luring a lot of people. But there's even more greatness that lies beyond July. Let's look at the exciting movies and TV series coming out in August. Before I continue, it would be nice if you guys would hit the subscribe button. And do press the bell icon so you don't miss out on our future videos. Now getting on to the list of exciting projects of August, we've got Monsters at Work. Actually, we don't scare anymore. Now we're laugh power. Sorry about that. Before Black Widow came out, Disney had been using Pixar's projects and IPs to bolster the success of Disney+. After Soul, Pixar Popcorn, and Luca, Monsters at Work has had a strong opening for the streamer. And the sequel series of Pixar's Monster Inc. and Monsters University will continue in August as well. 4th August will bring us the 6th episode of Monsters at Work. And we'll get 4 more episodes throughout August. The Bad Batch. More capable than an army. This new Disney Plus Star Wars series has been dearly welcomed by the fans. The elite and experimental clones of The Bad Batch have been running rampant for 12 episodes so far. But the show is slated to go on until episode 16. So August 6th will bring us the penultimate episode of The Bad Batch, while August 13th will deliver the finale of Season 1. The Suicide Squad Robert This is where the real fun begins, as James Gunn The Suicide Squad will arrive on HBO Max on August 6th. It will also release in theaters one day before its streaming release. We're truly excited to see the return of Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Even the likes of Rick Flagg, Captain Boomerang, and Amanda Walker are returning from the previous film. But the highlight of the movie is going to be the new roster that Mr. Gunn has assembled. John Cena is coming in as Peacemaker. Idris Elba is playing Bloodsport. And then we have characters like King Shark, Ratcatcher, and Polka Dot Man who will contribute to the theatrical experience of this film. There are other characters who might have been lined up to be killed after fighting Starro. Next up we have Amazing The Kissing Booth 3. What do you say? Okay. Yeah! Pull up your pants, you teenagers, because you're getting the final chapter of Netflix's The Kissing Booth franchise. By the end of the first one, Noah and Elle got separated. Noah went to Harvard while Elle headed back to school. But towards the end of the second film, she got back together with Noah. And now, we're gonna see her do things from her bucket list with her best friend Lee. But she's going to be stuck in the dilemma of choosing Harvard or Berkeley as her college. Basically, it will be a choice between her boyfriend Noah and her best friend Lee as Noah is in Harvard while Lee will be at Berkeley. But apparently, there's going to be some trouble involving Marcus as well. So let's see whom she'll ultimately end up choosing. The Kissing Booth 3 arrives on August 11th. What if? That's the question, isn't it? Every universe. While Netflix gives us a live-action teen drama on August 11th, Disney Plus will deliver some animated sci-fi madness from MCU's multiverse. Marvel just dropped the new What If trailer, Harder Than England dropped the Euro Cup. It isn't just any other animated series. This one comes directly from Marvel Studios, and everything happening in this show would be canon to MCU's multiverse. We are going to see several exciting alternate universe scenarios such as Killmonger saving Iron Man, Peggy becoming Captain Carter, an evil Doctor Strange, and the Avengers of the Multiverse assembling, among many others. So this series featuring Jeffrey Wright and many familiar MCU characters could turn out to be extremely surprising. While the hype train for it isn't as big as the other MCU shows so far, it will surely get bigger as we watch the first episode. After that, Disney is also bringing us Free Guy. If we didn't have a certain virus plaguing all countries, then we would have surely got Disney and Fox's Free Guy last year itself. In this action adventure, Ryan Reynolds is playing a non-playable character called Guy. He is in an open world video game, and crazy things start to happen when he realizes that he is a background character. This outlandish, highly anticipated film also stars other great actors like Jodie Comer, Taika Waititi, and Joe Keery. After suffering from several COVID delays, Free Guy is finally set to release on August 13th. It is one of the few core Fox movies that could be turned into a franchise of its own. And now that F9 and Black Widow have brought the box office back on its feet, we think that Free Guy could turn out to be a surprise success next month. People in the house. Beckett. 
Nobody has uh, lived there for years. I saw someone. John David Washington has been making the headlines ever since he starred in Tenet and Netflix's Malcolm and Mary. John David Washington has been making the headlines ever since he starred in Tenet and Netflix's Malcolm and Mary. Now he will appear in his second Netflix movie of the year, and it's called Beckett. This one follows Washington as an American tourist in Greece. During his time over there, he meets with an accident and finds himself knee-deep in a chilling conspiracy. It will be interesting to see how he finds his way out of this troubling situation. Beckett also arrives on August 13th. Don't Breathe too. Back in 2016, Avatar actor Stephen Lang played a blind man named Norman in the thriller Don't Breathe. He took down three delinquents who broke into his house to steal his money. Don't Breathe turned out to be quite profitable at the box office, and now we are getting its sequel five years later on August 13th. This time, the blind man will use his military training to save a young orphan from a group of kidnappers. The Protégé You can always think on your feet anyway. Not so much tonight. Mm -hmm. After the John Wick franchise, Lionsgate is bringing us another R-rated action-packed film with a female contract killer as its lead. Maggie Q plays Anna, who is the protege of Samuel L. Jackson's legendary assassin called Moody. Now Uncle Sam's name should be enough to excite anyone. But sadly, he is set to die in this one, as that's going to begin Anna's revenge story arc. Don't be alarmed with the loss of Moody, because we've also got Michael Keaton playing a crucial role. The Protégé hits theaters on August 20th, and it will be followed by Reminiscence. Closed. I know, I'm sorry it's late. The second big film that Warner Bros. is releasing next month features our very own Hugh Jackman. He is set to play a character called Nicholas Bannister in this visually stunning sci-fi film. He'd be a lonely veteran, who offers people to relive any memory or a moment of their lives. Through the course of the film, Bannister will fall in love with Rebecca Ferguson's character, May. But the trouble begins when he finds out about May's violent and criminal past through another client's memory. But the trouble begins when he finds out about May's violent and criminal past through another client's memories. This is where the film will take a really dark turn. Be sure to check it out on August 20th. Like the Suicide Squad, Reminiscence will hit the theaters on HBO Max simultaneously. Sweet Girl! Netflix's biggest film of August is going to be Sweet Girl. Jason Momoa plays a family man named Cooper, who vows to bring justice to those who murdered his wife. He'd also be protecting his daughter Rachel, who is played by Isabel Macedd. In fact, Rachel will actually be helping her father. This film will surely excite Dominic Toretto, as we'll be seeing a family fight as one. I don't have friends. I got family. Sweet Girl also joins the party on August 20th. Candyman. Candy the creepy reboot of Candyman with Yaya Abdul-Mateen II will finally release on August 27th. Do look out for this film because Jordan Peele is involved as a producer. While the Marvel director Nia DaCosta has directed this horror thriller, Teona Paris will also join this film, and Virginia Madsen will reinvestigate the case of the one-armed Candyman. Last but not the least, we've got an anime film called The Witcher – Nightmare of the Wolf. This is a movie set in the same universe as Netflix's The Witcher. It focuses on the origin story of Geralt's mentor and fellow Witcher, Vesumir. Before we get The Witcher's second season and the Blood Origins prequel, Netflix is bridging the gap with this epic spin-off. Which of these upcoming movies and TV shows are you excited about? Let us know in the comments section. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to check out some more fun videos on our channel. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!